everybody, this is Jurassic Adventures, and in today's video, I'll be repainting this Extreme Chompin' T-Rex, as well as teaching you the basics of airbrushing. Now, a lot of people see uh, people using airbrushes for, like, repaints and whatever, just airbrushes in general, and they think it's a really easy tool to use, and they think it's a time saver, and it instantly gives you great technique for painting. And that's not really entirely true. One, you definitely do need talent for airbrushing. Two, it uh, is a lot of maintenance to take care of an airbrush and uh, it's just it's work but if you know how to use it and you're good at using it you can uh, successfully use the airbrush to get really really good painting results and really make your repaints or whatever you're painting just look so much better so the type of things I'm gonna be going over in this video is basic techniques for airbrushing as well as cleaning and taking care of your airbrush as that is such a vital part in keeping this tool good to use. So before we start painting at all, I'm just gonna go over some basic things that you should probably look for when you are getting an airbrush. Basic things that you wanna know before you get an airbrush. But what this is, is, this is a dual action airbrush. This is what you're gonna use, you're gonna wanna use. You are not gonna wanna use a single action. Do not get a single action because what that does is it's just one stream of uh, constant pressure. It's the same sort of look. You can't really do any opacity things or whatever with it. You cannot get any variation in the stroke of the actual airbrush. When you spray it, it will look exactly the same every single time. And um, that's not necessarily a good thing for what we're doing. We're trying to fade things and all that. So definitely not a single action airbrush. Definitely want this dual action. And what the dual action is, is you have this sort of button press that is the air it will get the air moving and then this pushing it back will um that will adjust how much paint comes out actually and so uh if i pull this back all the way a lot of paint's going to come out and it's going to come out pretty rapidly if i lightly pull this back uh or i even like press less then less paint will come out it's you, once you start using it you'll understand more how it works but um definitely a dual action you also want a top feed airbrush. This is just way easier as well um, to just have the cup right here. You can clean it out easier and it's more accessible as well as it'll just work better with the acrylic paints and everything as it can just flow through the airbrush better. I used to use like a bottom feeder uh, and it just wasn't very good. It used in my old videos and I had a lot of struggles with it and a lot of frustration with it. So I definitely recommend a top fed airbrush. So another thing you want to look for in an airbrush is an airbrush that doesn't have a lot of parts and you can easily take down and clean. Cleaning is a very big part of airbrushing and uh, not having as many parts just simplifies that process and it makes you a lot less frustrated, a lot less things you have to take care of and a lot less uh, places you have to clean as well. So this airbrush I have right here, this Badger Patriot 105, um, this is a great airbrush and it doesn't have a lot of parts. It's very simplistic. See the needle just comes right out the back there with their... Uh, needle system that they have on these airbrushes and then the nozzle is just at the front here if you unscrew that which i'll show you later when we actually get into like the cleaning but um just having an airbrush with not a lot of parts and that's pretty simplistic that you can uh, understand and everything i'd say that's pretty important so i've been talking a lot about my airbrush this is a badger patriot 105 and uh this is a great airbrush most of the Badger airbrushes are really great, but I like this one in particular because it's just very easy to take down and clean as well as it produces awesome results. I know there are other airbrush companies. Uh, Iwata is pretty good. Pretty much anything that will work and is like uh, not weird and cheap and Chinese or whatever, just something that is of some sort of quality and there are reviews on and you know it's actually going to be okay. So obviously when you're airbrushing, you're gonna need a source of air and that's where this comes in. This is an air compressor by Badger and it's pretty old. I mean, I've had this since I started airbrushing and um, it's, it's loud and uh, it's a little weird with this piping to get this uh, moisture trap and PSI gauge to work, but it works for the most part. Just uh, find some sort of air compressor. What I don't recommend are those little plastic box air compressors that come with the Amazon are like really cheap airbrushes. Those don't really work at all and you don't have any control with them. I suggest getting a full unit like this. 
You can even get one from like the hardware store, but the main thing you're gonna wanna have on it is this PSI gauge as well as the moisture trap. So what the moisture trap does is it collects all the water that is in the air that is being compressed and then it makes it so it doesn't go into the line and get sprayed out by your airbrush and turn into a sputtery mess. And then um, this PSI gauge is for adjusting how much pressure is uh, actually being used. So if you do more pressure, it's gonna be more intense and uh, it can actually lead to problems though if you do too much. So that's why I really recommend one of these so you can get that sweet spot. Usually I do around like 18 to 20 PSI and uh, for normal colors, for primers, I do a little bit more like 25 to 30. And then for um, inks, I do like 15 to 10. And that's very important because if you don't have a PSI gauge and you don't really know what you're uh, shooting, it can actually, like if you have a high PSI, it can just cause the airbrush to really clog up all the time and stuff. So that's one of the things that can really save you a lot of frustration. And this is obviously very essential, so don't overlook it. But anyways, now on to the actual paint application process. Before we prime this figure, I'm just gonna talk about needle size real quick. Now, right now in the airbrush, we have a 0.25 needle, which is classified as a super detail needle by Badger. However, for priming, we want something a little bit bigger just so uh, all the primer doesn't get stuck up in there as it will uh, not spray as well and we'll have more problems and more frustration. So this is the 0.5 tip needle. Um, this is actually what comes with the uh, Patriot 105, I had to buy this 0.25 kit. I think it was like, uh, if I remember correctly, it was like 20 bucks. But honestly, I really recommend you get like a 0.5 size needle, like a mid-size needle, and then something smaller. So you can cover big areas and do like small details as well. Needle, and then we also have the nozzle and the uh, guard tip in the front here. I'm just gonna unscrew those. And so, the nozzle is inside this area, right here, this tip. But we also wanna take off the very tip as that is pretty much just like a guard for the needle and the nozzle and everything. And then we put on the 0.5 size one. We take our 0.5 size nozzle. We put that in there. And then we, uh, this one's a little bit weird because it doesn't actually seat into anything. It just kind of fits in there. And then you screw it back on. And then this is our 0.5 size needle. And we just put that in there. Nice and good. And we screw it on. And that's good to go. All right, so we got our airbrush ready. Now what we got to do is actually just put the paint in there. Now, this is a primer. It's already thin to good consistency. We just got to put it actually in the cup just put a good amount that should be good enough and now we are ready to spray for this one i'm going to take my psi gauge and i'm going to turn it up a bit to about 25 to 30 psi so here we're starting to airbrush as you can see i'm spraying the paint pretty lightly over small sections of the model for now because i'm just trying to get it layered on uh, smoothly and make it so there is no overspray. So for this, I'm just trying to cover everything, but I'm also trying to make sure that there's no spots where there's too much paint buildup or overspray. For stuff like primers or where you wanna cover up the entirety of a figure, you wanna start relatively lightly and get a nice solid even coat, and then you can start to really build it up later with more coats. And that will give you a solid surface to prime on. So here is a demonstration of what I mean by overspray or staying in the same area too long. As you can see, the paint's building up and that's not good. But now we're just going to cover the whole figure and get that all done. So now that we're done with our gray primer and the airbrush, we can clean it up. The first step you want to do is you want to dump all the existing paint out. You can also add some water to help it just flow out of the cup better. But then you're still going to have some in the cup. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to take some paper towel and you're going to wipe the inside of the cup thoroughly to try and get as much of that paint out as you possibly can without spraying anything through yet. So we got a pretty decent amount. There's still some in there. You can move your finger around even more and try and get more of that. But there's always still going to be a little bit of residue, right? 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some water. You see how that's all gunked up? And uh, you're just gonna keep on spilling that out until it's uh, relatively clear because this is still a lot of paint. So basically, just spill out that. And we can take our paper towel again and just start wiping. And it is a lot cleaner now. So let's put some more water and see how we did. So it's still a little bit murky, but we're getting there. The objective is to have clean water and a completely clean spray going through. So I cycled through some water a few more times by just, you know, spilling it out and then, uh, you know, cleaning it up with the towel a bit. Now we can start cycling some water through and I have my spray out pot right here. Basically you just put the airbrush in here and you spray it and it'll like catch all the little uh, debris and things coming off of here that you don't want to breathe in. So there are a couple things you should pretty much always clean when you're airbrushing, that being the needle. So basically you just take it out and you wipe it off like so. So that's already clean and pretty good. But uh, the nozzle as well. So we're gonna unscrew the front of the airbrush here. And the nozzle or the cone is the, um, looks like this on my airbrush. It could look a little bit different depending on which one you have, but it's always gonna be cone in shape. And then it's always gonna be where the paint flows through the most. So what I have right here is this uh, wire cleaning tool. And basically these are all needles and they have little ribs on them and they'll pretty much just uh, poke and get all the paint and build up in, in there out of there. So you just find the one that fits. In this case, it should be this one. And it will sort of scrape the inside of there and get all that stuff out. This is actually pretty clean already, so we're not gonna have much, but if it's really dirty, you'll see that there's like actually a lot of paint that comes out of there, a lot of little bits that are just dried and like rubbery. And so those prevent the airbrush from flowing properly. So you always wanna clean those out. So I highly recommend one of these. Uh, comes in a kit off of Amazon for about eight bucks. So very affordable. And I would uh, definitely get it if you are considering airbrushing. The cleaning set also comes with these brushes and these can be helpful for like cleaning out the um, sort of base part here of your nozzle. Again, there's not much in there I have, uh, so not much to clean, but uh, also for doing like the internals of the actual airbrush, you can like put it in the front and whatever. And sometimes if there's paint in there, it'll come out and it's a uh, pretty useful thing. So that comes in the cleaning kit as well. I'll put the link in the description. Also, some actual airbrush cleaner can be helpful as well to get some of that stubborn paint out of there, especially with primers that like to stick to the inside of the airbrush a lot. So after you're done cleaning, your airbrush should have a really nice flow. Um, everything should come out the nozzle very nicely and there should be no problems in the cup with it uh, like bubbling back or anything. Um, and it should feel very smooth, no hiccups or anything. If it's not the case, then you're probably gonna have to redo some of those cleaning steps and make sure everything is clean in the airbrush. Um, and then the water, when you put it in, it should not have any paint cloud to it or any of that. Your cup should be completely clean. And um, yeah, if that's all good, then you can continue. And we wanna do that cleaning after every step every color because of the fact that if you don't, it will get very, very messy and your tool will not be very usable at all. And yes, it is very time consuming to do all that. It takes about five to 10 minutes after each color just to clean out the airbrush, but it will really, really help you in the long run, make it so you don't have to replace your airbrush or uh, go through any hassles. It'll make your experience 10 times better when you're actually painting and your results will be way better. So in the case that your airbrush just isn't working how you want it to work, uh, the trigger is either hanging up or uh, it's not spraying at all how you want, you're gonna wanna do a deep clean. Now what that entails is you're gonna have to take uh, a container, put some Windex or airbrush cleaner in there, take the whole airbrush apart and then um, soak it for a few hours. And then you're gonna wanna take it out. Definitely do not leave it in there for too long. It will ruin the seals on the inside of the airbrush. But um, you're gonna to wanna to take it out of there and after a few hours, and then you're gonna to wanna to clean everything really, really nicely. You're gonna to wanna to scrub everything down, make sure all the little nooks and crannies are clean as can be. And then you are going to want to assemble everything and then obviously make sure it sprays. 
So what we're gonna do with the airbrush before we start painting anything is we're gonna stick with this same needle nozzle combo, the um, 0.5. And then we are going to turn down our um, PSI on our compressor from whatever 25 or 30 I think I had it at. We're gonna turn it down to about uh, 18 to 20. That's where that PSI gauge comes in really handy because if you have too high of PSI, it'll just dry the paint way too fast and you'll end up with a lot of clogging and just really powerful sprays, which you do not really want when you're airbrushing. So I don't think I ever said what we're gonna be painting this T-Rex as. This is just gonna be my own design, honestly. I'm just gonna be doing whatever I feel would look cool. And so um, about 80% of the time, even when I'm doing repaints that are like of JP dinosaurs or whatever, I am mixing my own colors to get that desired look I want. So we got all our colors in here and then we're gonna take thinner. This is uh, very, very, very important. Uh, airbrush thinner is infinitely important when you're spraying paint. A lot of people don't know exactly how to use this and a lot of people don't even use it. They, they think that water is okay or whatever, but that is simply not the case. Airbrush thinner is very, very essential. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and we're gonna pour quite a bit in there. And then we're gonna start mixing until we think we have a good color. All right, so that appears to be a good color and we actually added um, the right amount of thinner the first time. What you wanna see in the thinner is you wanna see it sort of come back down the sides when you uh, pull the paint up on the sides with the brush. If you wanna see it flow right back down. But that's a good consistency and we can get into painting and we are gonna be painting the underbelly with this color. What paint thinner does is allows the paint to have a good flow to it and basically just flow through your airbrush way better and way more easily without it stopping or any of that because normal paint is just way too thick to go through those little uh, passageways in the airbrush. Quick disclaimer, the amount of thinner you use or even if you use thinner is determined by what paint you are using. For example, if you're using an airbrush paint like Vallejo Air, you're not really gonna have to use thinner because it's already pretty much pre-thinned to the consistency that you would like. But with all of this stuff, still eye it just in case it's not to the consistency that it needs to be. Even airbrush paints can be a little bit thick sometimes. So when I'm thinning paints, I usually go by the rule that I want the consistency of milk. You can usually tell when it's good when the paint starts to flow down the side of the container with ease. Also, I highly recommend some high quality acrylics rather than Walmart paint or just cheap craft paint. I love the AK Interactive paints, but also Vallejo and Army Painter are decent companies and those will give you good results through the airbrush. The reason you shouldn't use craft paints is they're very cheap and grainy and have a lot of weird things in the paint that could get clogged in your airbrush and they're just not very high quality even for brush painting. So for me, it's definitely worth it to have those better paints. So now that we have our color loaded up into our airbrush, we can get airbrushing. So when painting this underbelly, we're still covering a fairly large area. So it's pretty much the same sort of thing as primer, except we're gonna start trying to fade out some of those edges. So as you get to the edge of where you want it to be, you're gonna wanna spray lighter and make sure there's less coming out to get that nice fade. All right, so I cleaned the airbrush out. I set it down for a second as we are gonna do some dry brushing. I have a lighter version of the same color we use and I'm just gonna lightly dry brush over the whole uh, underbelly. Now that we have the dry brushing done, we have the next color mixed up, which is a sort of grayish brown tone, and that will be for the top of the figure, and we'll be using the 0.25 needle and nozzle combo, as that is the finer one, and we are gonna be doing some finer details. Quick tip for the airbrush, uh, don't pour too much paint in the cup, don't fill it all the way up to the top because you can always add more and you don't want to have it spilling everywhere. So with the smaller needle and nozzle, it's not going to be much different, it's going to be mostly the same. We're still spraying uh, a big area, but we're also doing some small details. So as we get to those, we're going to start being a little bit more careful and start spraying a little bit more lightly and more controlled to really get those patterns we want.
So like here, I'm just spraying pretty lightly and pretty controlled and really getting those patterns that I want on the side of the figure. And then on the underbelly, I'm adding some little dots. Those are achieved by just spraying pretty lightly for a little bit in the same area and then stopping. So after just one color, you can see it's already looking really nice. We have a whole lot of nice patterning going on and you really get those nice natural looking patterns and uh, just a really nice overall figure when you use the airbrush. It's a very nice result, but you gotta know how to use it and you just gotta know how to achieve that sort of stuff. It's taken me a while to really get down the technique and I still am learning every single time I do a repaint. So it's, it's something that takes time and progress, um, but once you get it down, you uh, really start to make good looking stuff. All right, so as you already know, we cleaned out the airbrush after the last color and now we can move on to the next color. We're gonna add a bit more of vibrance to this figure and we are gonna use some deep brown and we are gonna go along the back and start making up a pattern. Now for this lighter orange brown, we are just spraying pretty much exactly how we did for the underbelly. So airbrushing really isn't that hard, it's just knowing how to do certain things and certain techniques. Next color is going to be medium rust and we are just going to dry brush over these uh, orange parts a little bit. Now that we are done with that, we mixed up our next color which is a very dark brown and we are going to do some patterning on this uh, orange area and kind of fade it into the brown area. When mixing paints I find it very useful to use like these little cups and you can just kind of mix it up accordingly and then uh, um, it's easy to pour into the actual cup of the airbrush. For these sort of dot patterns you just want to spray it lightly you want to go carefully to make sure you're really getting that because if not you can lead to overspray and that's not what you want with these controlled little dots. Same thing goes with stripes. So the pattern on the T-Rex is all done. I did a lot of stripes and little dots. And uh, those are actually pretty uh, easy to do if you know how to control your finger. It's just you don't want to go too much. And you also just want to go uh, smoothly, not too rough. Don't hold in the area for too long. And then you can get some pretty good looking patterns. But now what we can do is move into the eyes and the other details. Here I'm painting the eye in light gray first before the red orange that I do later because that allows the red orange to be very opaque. And then I did the black people and the white dot and those are pretty obvious steps. I do those every single repaint. It gives the creature a very lifelike look. And then I put a red ink over the eye to bring the colors together. Here I'm painting the mouth a pale pink, and then I put a flesh wash over it. The finger and toe claws are in black. And then lastly, I just put a brown wash over the teeth. That's it for this repaint. I think this T-Rex turned out really nice looking. I like the colors a lot on it, and I think it looks very menacing. As always, I hope you guys learned something new about airbrushing and repainting. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. As always, this is Jurassic Adventures, and I'll see you in the next video.